the velocity lines are going to be simply like this. At capital R, velocity decreases to zero. Let us find a quantity which is very important industrially as well as as well as in engineering applications that is known as the flow rate or the volume flow rate. Our velocity profile was pr square by 4 eta l multiplied with 1 minus r square by capital R square. We are interested to find rate of volume flow or simply the flow rate. This is represented by this quantity q dot. Note that in any engineering quantity we consider, this dot represents a change with time. So q is basically the volume flow, so the dot represents the volume flow rate. The volume flow rate can be found out if we recall in Bernoulli's equation we have we had considered the volume flow rate being equal at both ends or the both ends of the streamline. So we said for the equation of continuity to hold the volume entering should be the volume leaving. This is what we said. So A times V was our volume flow rate because velocity changes with time. Velocity contains a length term and a time term. Area contains two length terms. So this is basically L cube T minus 1. This is the dimensions of AV. L cube is the dimension for volume. T minus 1 is the uh, dimension for frequency. So this gives us the volume flow rate. Let us do the same here also. However, we cannot write A into V directly for both ends because of the fact that velocity is changing radially from the center to the periphery. So what we really need to do, if we look at the cross section of the pipe like this, we will consider an annulus of thickness dr. This is going to be dr. This area covered by this annulus is going to be 2 pi r. Say this radius is r. 2 pi r times dr. So this is the area through which fluid is flowing at a particular velocity. What is that velocity going to be? That velocity is going to be this. So this velocity is passing through this annulus at any point of time. We need to find out what is the total flow rate from the center to the periphery. This is our objective. So if we find the volume rate q dot, this is going to be equal to then, let's say dq dot, let us consider only one annulus for the time being. This will be some area term times some velocity term. Say this is the area term and this is the velocity term. The area term is going to be 2 pi r times dr. The velocity term is going to be this. So this is going to be equal to pr square by 4 eta l times 1 minus r square by capital R square. This is our flow rate through this small, sorry, this is a small flow rate through a small annulus what we considered. 
Now there are going to be infinite such annulus from the periphery to the center. That can be found if we integrate both sides from zero radius to maximum radius. This is our net result. Let us solve this. This is simply going to be Q dot. From this we can pick out some constants and take them out. This is going to be a constant, this is going to be a constant. So 2 pi pr square by 4 eta l. Inside we have from 0 to r. I am taking this small r inside this bracket. So I am getting this as this quantity times dr which left here. If we solve this integration, we get 2 pi pr square by 4 eta l times, if we integrate this small r, we will get small r square by 2. That when applied to these limits, let us write this integration first. This will be r square by 2 minus this will be small r to the power 4 by 4 r square. So this is going to be this. This is under these limits. Let us simplify this ex expression. So the Q dot is equal to 2 pi pr square by 4 eta l times, we apply limits now, we get r square by 2 minus 0 for the first term minus r to the power 4 by 4 r square minus 0. This is what we get. This when further simplified, we get this as r square by 2. This r square gets cancelled off with 1 r square here. So we have r square by 4. So r square by 2 minus r square by 4 is going to give us r square by 4. We can cancel off this 2 and this 4 and get a 2 here. In total, this is going to be pr to the power 4 times pi divided by 8 eta l. This is our flow rate. Note that this is the total flow rate. So if we have a fluid moving with velocity v0 in the center line with this v0, we will end up having this flow rate. This can also be written as v0 r square pi by 2. If our v0 is this. If we look at this expression, this is nothing but some velocity v0 by 2 times pi r square. What is pi r square? Pi r square is nothing but the cross sectional area of this pipe. Then what is this v0 by 2? This is just half of the maximum velocity in the center. This, if we calculate separately, we will find that this is the average velocity through the pipe. 
the average velocity times the cross sectional area of the pipe gives us the net flow rate so we define this quantity average velocity we average as q dot times the cross sectional area this is an important relation in engineering applications this we average in this case is nothing but v not by 2 now let us look at this term separately and make some analogies with electricity we have q dot being equal to pr to the power 4 pi by 8 eta l in electricity we have v equal to ir so i equal to v by r this is the potential difference across the wire this is the resistance which is which is available in that length of the wire and this is the current flowing through the wire this is we know here let us make an analogy with this let us say this is similar to i this i this term is then similar to this term now we have something called potential difference in case of electricity what are we going to have in in case of then fluids what we are really going to have in case of fluids is pressure difference which is denoted by this term so this term represents v so the remaining terms here are going to signify r how are they going to signify r this quantity is basically the inverse of r so this is basically 1 by r so thus we have i is equal to v by r here so we can write it as q dot equal to p by 8 eta l by pi r to the power 4 this is known as the flow resistance or the viscous resistance this quantity is the pressure difference this is the flow current or flow rate Note that this relation comes in very handy when you are solving multiple choice question type problems. In that case, if they simply give you a pipe with such a flow, you can always write this equation considering this as a resistance, this as the voltage difference, this as the current. So if I give you a problem like this, say I have a pipe like this, this is getting splitted up in two different pipes like this then what we really need to apply is nothing but the parallel resistance theorem something like this say like this so there is some water or any liquid flowing through this it's getting split up in two parts like this so the resistance of each such section can be found out by this theorem say the resistance of this section is r1 this is r2 considering both are same we will have both to be similar and 1 by r plus 1 by r will give you 1 by r total r total being equal to this you can find out what r is
this is the beauty of this equation. 